idea of a forest garden is just a system for allowing different plants to grow that you can harvest. And you can do that on a window box, quite frankly. You don't have to have a huge space, but it might be perfect um, in the zone between, say, a field and a woodland, um, which you might uh, want to also create as a sort of habitat for increasing biodiversity. With a piece of woodland, there are generally there are natural clearings. You would need to create an area that will get some sun into it. It will mean uh, definitely sort of clearing out the soil, testing the soil, seeing what's there, digging it out to start with, and going through a normal process of how you would cultivate any piece of land. We started to create a forest garden here on the edge of a small piece of ancient woodland that we have. We dug a, a deep pond here and the excess that came out of the pond created landforms, so we created some undulating landscape. Certainly collecting water from any roof or anything like that will certainly speed it up. It's not essential to creating a forest garden and it shouldn't be a prerequisite at no. all. Um, it's a nice to have. It's lovely to have. You just sort of look at what you've got and you work with what you've got. If you are going to create a pond and you don't have clay, you can either do two things. You can either ship clay in, and that's not as expensive as it sounds, but it's a bit laborious, um, or you can just line it. And you don't have to create a massive pond, and it doesn't have to be deep. So when you're designing your forest garden, it's important to consider, obviously, which direction the sun's coming from. We're fortunate here that we're predominantly south-facing, if you, if you take it on this angle. And when you put your trees in, you don't want to put a great big tree that's going to create shade, unless you want shade-loving plants beneath it. You would probably put your taller trees to the back and your smaller trees to the front. In theory, obviously it doesn't work like that completely because each tree takes up um, with its canopy a certain amount of space. And you've got to consider what height that's going to come to and what sort of shade that's going to cause. Some plants would like more shade than others and that's all part of the design process. We needed to get the soil good before we could actually start planting it. We put in the deep rooting nitrogen fixing plants. Some plants were in there to accumulate minerals, some were there to attract insects. And the idea of a forest garden is that really once it's established, which could take up to about 15 years, that it's reasonably uh, low maintenance. And they did their job and broke down the soil. And then we had to mulch that down for a good couple of years really. And um, in fact, we left that on um, until we were ready to plant. Initially, it's going to be hard work to clear it. It could be really beautiful leaf mould. The soil could be fantastic. It's all very dependent. That, that is something that you need to test out and, and see. There's no given. You start off with the main tree layer. Following on from that, you've got the lower tree layer, which is things like your fruit trees. Maybe a lime tree. There's a couple of different types of apple trees. These... And apple trees can grow in quite a bit of shade if necessary. They, they pop up all over the place. And they're producing crop within the first year, so that's amazing. After that is your shrub layer, which is your red currants, your black currants, and then herbaceous, rhizo, which is root vegetables, the soil surface, which is things like wild strawberries. And then after that, you've got your climbers. Once you've got your ground cover in, really that's kind of the last layer that you'd be planting and hopefully that contains the soil, it stops it from drying out, it basically fills up the final part of the, the picture. I think it's quite important when you're creating um, a forest garden that you're creating a, an environment that you enjoy being in and for me it has to be a thing of beauty as much as function. It will look quite sparse to start with and there's quite a lot of maintenance as you're trying to help the plants win the battle against the weeds. We are also learning. I think that's a quite a key thing. I think the knowledge you require for a forest garden is mainly to understand how certain things work well with others. Your wind direction, your, your sun and your shade, um, the type of soil that you've got. Those, I think, are the key elements. One area of your garden may be very rich. We've had to create soil. Some areas are better than others. We planted our blueberries in the completely wrong place. So we dug them up, we've repositioned them, and we try again. As time progresses, the plants that you've put into your forest garden will take over. They will all work together, and it can look wild and ragged.
with a little bit of maintenance, you can knock that into shape. The idea of a forest garden that one acre can feed up to 10 people is staggering, quite frankly, when you consider what you could do in terms of arable in the same sort of space. It will allow you to produce different types of nuts and berries and uh, twine and resins and oils and lots of things like that. Having seen a mature forest garden, it is a garden of Eden. It is spectacular. There's nothing new about forest gardening, but it's a new phrase that's been coined. And I think it gives people great opportunity to do something a little bit different, a bit more interesting. I'd like to think that we've left something of us here.